in the name above all names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. This is part two of Walk in Newness of Life, from Romans chapter 6. First read verses 5 to 14 inclusive. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. The foundations of all this series of studies were laid in part one. Now we move on and we look at the what has, has taken place because death leads to life. Man, woman, created what? As a living being. And the living being is the spirit. Yes, has the soul. That which, which very much uh, looks and thinks, yes, has the feelings. But God is a spirit. We're told in St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, and the, what, the 24th verse. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. <coughs> so there is that quickening, that coming to life, to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. Because without the life of God within us, how can we worship God in spirit and in truth? And it is the coming in, the death, that identification with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2 and the 20th verse says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. I am not bodily crucified, but there is that crucifixion which accepts that I have to die, to die to the old life, to die to the old nature, to die to that which is of sin. Yet, nevertheless, I live. Yes, we're still living. 
when we come to Christ. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. It is coming together with Christ as one with him and receiving from him that new life, that new nature, which is the very nature of God, the divine nature. But Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. So yes, we still have that life in the flesh. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here on earth. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the love of God. That's the reality of redemption. The God loved. And God can only love in one, of one place. And that was the cross. That's love. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God being shown and the love of God being provided through the means of the death and subsequently the resurrection of the Son of God himself. Yes, do you know that you implanted together with Christ in the likeness of his death that the old life has gone and the new life has come through the, the likeness of his resurrection. It's that spirit within, the spirit of God, the life of God, which comes within that brings life. And it brings the same resurrection life that the Lord Jesus Christ received from the Father. That quickening, that bringing the very life, the very nature of the divine life within us. And it is that life which quickens us, which brings us to life, which takes the darkness away, which takes the desire to sin away. Because we have the love within us of the one who loved us and gave his life for us. Have you? Have you seen that? Has that been revealed to you? To your spirit? That you're born again of God? When you have come to God, according to his way, his only way. Of repentance of sin and by the faith of God planted within us, receiving the newness of life, the resurrection life of God, the Son, And it's knowing this, as absolutely being certain of this. Not that I think, oh, 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 this might have happened. You're thinking, hmm, I hope it's happened. But saying, I know this has happened. And Paul says, knowing this, 
Our old man is crucified with him, the old life, the old nature, the old sinful nature, the old satanic nature has been utterly and completely crucified with him. And when that is known, what happens? The new life, the new nature, the resurrection life comes within. And what's more, it's like darkness has gone and the light has come in. Has that happened to you? All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And it is that joy, a joy, not a happiness here, but the joy of the Lord becomes our own. And no doubt there were times when the old, the old devil will want to come along and, uh, and try to cause doubt within you. But there's no doubt. Turn to the word of God. And say, it is written. Have those verses to stand upon. Even that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. God gave what him his son. Romans 5 and 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's emphatic. That's not wishy-washy. That's certainty. That's reality. Coming back to Romans 6, 6, that the body of sin might be what might be destroyed. Death, the outworkings of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ within the believer. Right from the very moment you believed and you received, you received the person you didn't receive an influence. You received an actual person, the person of God himself. And when he came in, he came in to destroy the old life, the old sinful life within you. Because the old sinful life and the new nature cannot go together. that henceforth we should not serve sin. And should you be serving sin? Have you been born again of God? Is God your life because the two don't add up? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Let's look. As in the margin it tells me, is justified from sin. Yes, the Lord himself, the one who is newness of life, the one whom we walk in the newness of life because he's within us. He has justified us, justified you before the holiness of God. 
You had no hope without Christ. And there's no hope in, the, in other religions and no religion. There's only hope in God because there is only one person in this world. And that is God himself. And that which is outside of God because God lives within the believer. So, they're not outside of God, it's God within. But anyone who is outside of God and outside of the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Saviour is walking as an independent self, having the life of Satan within. And they're outside the kingdom of God. The word of God will stand forever and will not be changed. Even though there are those who have done their worst to try and change it. God will not be mocked. His purpose is true and he will see through every word within his word. And the purpose of the cross yes was to bring us To be one with God himself. And bringing us to be one with himself. Receiving of his life. Was that we would not serve sin. Because sin was to do with that which was rebellion against God through Adam. The independent self is rebellion against God. Because it's looking to make a God of, of whoever it be. There are those in this world who make themselves their own God. Rather than coming into line with the great wonders, the great purpose of what God created man and woman to be in himself. Oh, it's not a miserable life to be a Christian. It's a, a wonderful life. Yes, there are those who do their utmost to come against those who are biblical Christians and, and have God within them. That's not unexpected because the, the, Christi, the Christ within, within, he was rejected during his, his earthly ministry, and particularly against those who called themselves religious. And there will be those who, are, who manifest. They'll manifest devils. I've had them come against me and manifest devils. Because it's not me, it's the Christ within me which causes them to manifest because they're convicted and while still want their own independent self they still want to carry their sin now verse 8 if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him of course, we shall live with him. Not just, in, not just in heaven, not just in eternity, but here on earth. He has to be. When he comes in and his resurrection light comes in, then he comes in for what he comes to stay. 
It comes in forever. It has to come and it has to stay. Unless, of course, you sin against the Holy Ghost. That's, that's the one that can't be forgiven. But that apart, he comes in to make his home and he comes in to stay. And when he comes in to stay, then what is the point of, of thinking, oh, that he is separate to me? How can you have separation? Totally impossible. Why would Jesus have illustrated at oneness with himself, the vine and the branch, I know I use this many, many occasions. But the life of the vine can't function fully, can't bring forth fruit without the branch, and the branch can't bring forth fruit without the vine. Jesus, he spoke in very, in simple terms, understandable terms. And it is he, the life of God flowing, flowing continuously. Yes, a sap like through the vine. Ah, the Spirit of God as a river of living water. This is the resurrection life. These are the positives of the new life. Knowing that Christ Yes, he's been raised from the dead. And what's more, he dieth no more. It is completely impossible for him to die again. He who is life, the very creator of life, the sustainer of life, will never die again. And because he lives where? Within those who are his, who belong to his, him, who are one with him, they will die, never die again. They shall have, be with him forever. And death have no more dominion over him. Yes, we leave this world. No one's going to stop here forever. But death has been conquered. Bodily death has been conquered. We shall have a new body. And a new body in the, in the likeness of himself. The likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? That that's God. Dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, what? Our Lord. He becomes our Lord. Is he your Lord? There are many who say, oh, he's my Savior. But why is he your Lord? Should he not be your Lord, then you are still displaying independent self. Can't have one without the other. Can't have Savior without the Lord. Because you're still looking to keep yourself separate from Him. And sin shall not. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. There are so there are many, many, many who go to churches or go to whatever meetings and they let sin reign in their mortal body because they let the lusts of the flesh reign within them. Are you born again? I challenge whether you're born again if you're letting the lusts of the flesh reign within you. And to yield not 
your life, anything to do with life, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Instead, yield yourselves where unto God. Let God lead you. When he's become your life, he will lead you. Be open to him, to hear from him. And go, follow, walk with him. Because Paul spoke about walking in newness of life. It is a walk. And it's a daily walk. Through often the drudgery and the common tasks of life. But Jesus walked what is a natural person here on earth. And it is not looking to be super spiritual, not looking to be religious, but letting the Lord have his way, just as he walked and worked and ministered in his own time here on earth. So are you, so am I. As being in the likeness of his resurrection life, we'll have that same life lived out amongst others to share that wonderful and glorious life, yet being outworked in all the things that come with daily living. O oh God, thank Thee that it is in the midst of the daily living, the midst of the natural things of life, that the very life, the resurrection life, the newness of life, of the Lord Jesus Christ is lived and outworked amongst, amongst those that you bring us into contact with day by day. For thy glory this will continue that the Son shall be revealed through each one that he has become their life. Amen.